Hello, I'm Thomas Mayer. And I'm Gail Bodarf. And we're the co-editors to the new Walking Guide to the Big Trees of Walla Walla. Thomas and I thought that Pioneer Park would be the perfect place to introduce the third edition of A Walking Guide to the Big Trees of Walla Walla. For it was here in 1909 that the Women's Park Club decided to plant this marvelous grove of London plane trees. These trees create a veritable cathedral around our historic bandstand. This is our legacy. This is the beginning of the focus in this city on the beautiful monumental trees. Hello. It would be useful to have a little bit of the history, since this is the third edition. So I'd like to tell you about how this all began. Back in 1996, Robert Van Pelt decided he wanted to put together a collection of the big trees for Washington State. And to do that, he connected with different people in different communities around the state and asked them to propose to him big monumental trees. Our local collaborator with Robert Van Pelt was Shirley Muse, and she worked with him to recognize some of the big trees here in Walla Walla. And so that was the beginning. Robert Van Pelt did this collection, and then Shirley Muse did the first uh, publication of the Walking Guide to the Big Trees of Walla Walla. And um, we decided that this little brochure, or this little booklet, was so classic and well-loved here in Walla Walla that we wanted to replicate it in that we wanted to use the original art, the original title, and dedicate it to Shirley Muse, who started it all. However, we decided that given the fact that these booklets were based on uh, material that was collected back in 1996, the thorough update needed to have take place. Gail mentioned that we've lost a number of champion trees in Walla Walla. I'd like to give an example of just how ephemeral championship status really is. A few years ago, we were driving on a road trip through Northern California. We drove from Mendocino to Ukiah on a back road. We came upon a little grove of coastal redwoods. And to our astonishment, that little grove held the world champion tallest tree. There were a number of trees in that grove, I think nearly a dozen. They were all in the same size range, 360 to 370 feet. The Mendocino tree was considered the world's tallest tree for only four brief years. From 1996, about the time that Robert Van Pelt's book was published, until the year 2000. And then another taller tree was discovered in Northern California, and then another one. And by 2006, the year that the second edition of The Walking Guide to Big Trees was published, the Mendocino tree had dropped to ninth. It had dropped nine places in 10 years and was no longer a champion. Let's go outside and look at some of Walla Walla's trees.
I'm standing here in the 300 block on Catherine, and we're out here because we wanted to demonstrate some of the changes that can unpredictably happen to our trees. Um, there used to be two giant trees in this area where I'm presently standing, and you can see they're no longer here. These were in uh, Robert Van Pelt's book of 1996. One was a giant sugar maple, uh, Acer saccharum, and the other one was a white basswood, also known as uh, tilia or linden to other people. Anyway, the one tree was over 100 feet tall, and the other one was over 90 feet tall. And they're both magnificent trees. But you can see they're gone. It just goes to show that even these gorgeous big championship trees are subject to uh, removal. And we don't know exactly the location, whether they were in the parking strip or on the lawn. But in any event, they were both here in this area on this block. We're here in the courthouse yard standing before this mammoth Sequoia Dendron Giganteum. It's been unrecognized in the walking guide, didn't make it into the first two editions, and sadly, we still haven't included it in the third edition. We just ran out of space. But this tree is quite possibly still the second largest sequoia in the entire state. Walla Wall is filled with these trees that are, in my mind, and probably in yours, unrecognized champions. We are very privileged to live in Washington State. We have so many wonderful trees here. Of the top 10 largest trees in the world, four of them are Washington natives. So we have many incredible trees in this part of the world. And I think this is what made Robert Van Pelt eager to go out and find the champion trees in Washington. And in so doing, he found these trees and he put them in this book. But Shirley Muse even acknowledges in her introduction to one of the earlier editions of The Walking Guide that these were simply known trees. These were trees that had been brought to Van Pelt's attention, and therefore they became part of the collection. But there are lots of other trees out there that are just as significant and is worthy of being champions as these. So Thomas and I thought about this quite a bit, and we decided that it was important to shift the attention away from just doing champion trees. So we decided to expand the walking guide. And the third edition includes self-guided tours in both our parks and Whitman campus and our neighborhoods. The purpose is to celebrate the trees of the city of Walla Walla and their diversity and to have everyone enjoy the bounty that is here. Now having said that, let's go take a look at one last tree. We've brought you here to Whitman campus. I'm on the bridge at Cordner Glen, which you see to my left. There's the path that leads out to Boyer Avenue, and we're directly across from Miriam. And on the right, the creek leads down to Lakeham, Duckham. And there's our objective, 
a little tree down on the banks of the creek. I'm standing beside a young tree, D158. This is the Quercus coccinea, or scarlet oak. It's one of the most beautiful red trees in the fall in the, in the forest, easily recognizable by its extreme scarlet color. It was chosen by the Whitman Tree and Landscape Committee, and it was recommended by Bob Biles, a former groundskeeper here, that they plant a tree in Shirley Muse's honor. And this is the tree that they selected. It's very appropriate to have a tree planted in Shirley's memory because she was a great lover of trees. And so we honored her by dedicating the third edition of the Walking Guide to the Big Trees of Walla Walla. And I would like to read from Shirley. These are her own words. We agree with them completely. We couldn't have written them better ourselves to express the way we feel. And we would like to leave this sentiment with you. The stately old trees which today we take for granted and at times carelessly dispose of are here because of the foresight, hard work, and financial sacrifice of early Walla Walla residents. Most of the large trees in Walla Walla were planted around the turn of the 20th century. And thanks to those who preceded us, Walla Walla is known throughout this arid region as a city of trees. What happens to our city's trees rests with the citizens. What better way to honor those who came before us than to care for our trees and parks which they established and to plant more for those who follow us. Shirley Muse, 1998. And with that, we are closing our introduction to the third edition of the Walking Guide to the Big Trees of Walla Walla. Thank you.